Hello, it's Burgess Taylor and it's Coffee Chat Monday or Monday's Coffee Chat. This is going to be a chatty coffee chat. Might be one of the chattiest coffee chats I've had in a while, so you might want to grab you a cuppa. Okay, let's get started. Shakespeare said, Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we might oft win by fearing to attempt. Did you know that there is an actual, the fear of imperfection of not being good enough is called a telophobia. I probably butchered that with my pronunciation, <laughs> which I've been criticized for, but that's okay. Today's video is in part, a video response to Cindy Gwintart Baldo's video called Chasing Perfection. And then the subtitle is Will I Ever Make Perfect Videos? And in her description, she says, It is so easy to get sucked into the beautiful Bujo lettering plannering. And I'm going to add journaling vortex on the internet and to let that vortex make you feel inadequate. And in the video, she talks about her feelings of inadequacy and how she's managing them. Well, while watching her video, and a heads up just to forewarn you, she does cuss in her videos. I love her videos. I love her videos. But just to kind of let you know, she's got a bit of a potty mouth, and I do too, and I've had to rein that in thanks to YouTube's demonetization. Anyway, <laughs> what I wanted to talk about today is sort of a video response to that part of chasing perfection, that feeling of not being good enough. And part of that for me has been chasing the fancy things. Uh, like Alice, down the rabbit hole, I went and I found myself getting things. Replacing my, or trying to, the void that I felt, the stress and the anxiety and the depression, trying to fix those by things. When I got back from the hospital, from my dad passing away and my mom being at ICU, once my mom got home and I sat down to create my journal pages, I was all off. I was completely thrown off my game. And I thought, oh, it was the journal. I needed a new journal, maybe I needed to start over, and sometimes you have to start over. You like my, my, my mug? It's my new Christmas from Tim Burton's The Night Before Christmas. My daughter loves, that's like one of her favorite movies. She actually loves anything by Tim Burton. So, anyway. This, I told you, this is going to be a rambly, chatty coffee chat. Perfection and feeling good enough was kind of tied into some of the fancy things. Now, don't get me wrong. I have found some wonderful, wonderful things through being enabled. These are just some of my favorite fountain pens. Uh, these two are Platinums. This is the Platinum Plazar, and this is the Platinum Carbon Dust Pen, which I have MacGyvered. Thank you, Romani. And then I have another Twisby Echo. I have the clear one, but I have the Twisby Mini and the Twisby Echo in black, and then I have a clear Twisby Echo. And those are just some of my favorite fountain pens. I also have two Pilot Pereiras. One is a demonstrator with the red, and one is a white. Those in the fine. Um, the white one is a very, it's fine, and it's a little, little, little scratchy, but the medium Pilot Carrera is not scratchy at all, but I've noticed that with a lot of fine tip 
found pens, they're a little scratchy. And I'm not a real big fan of scratchy, but sometimes I need that fine to write little because anyway. There we go. So the things. I found myself looking at all kinds of things. Things I don't even need. Things I know in the back of my mind I don't even really want. But I see them and they're like, ooh, pretty. Ooh, pretty. Fancy, fancy. If I got that, it would make my journal pages better, prettier. I could use it. Yes. If I got that, I could do a review on it and I would get more views. If I got that, it would make my handwriting better. If I got that, I bet you I could watercolor better. If I got that, I bet you I could. So I got back from the hospital and sat down and went to do some stuff. And then when I went on the urban sketch date with my daughter, I took extra supplies so that we could do this together. Uh, extra water brushes and extra water and paint brushes and watercolors. And when I sat down, she's like, well, mom, what am I supposed to do? Cause she doesn't do watercolor very much. She's uh, she does acrylic and she's a sketcher. She likes to, she does sketching with ink or graphite and stuff like that. Watercolor's not really been her thing. She's just now kind of getting into watercolor. She's into all the other things. And I, talked to her and I told her some of the basics and I realized at that very moment when she was creating her art and I was creating my art and I looked at what I was doing what I saw she was like well, mom that looks like an illustration from a kids book I saw the building but the building was overwhelmed almost by all the cars that looked like they were stacked on top of each other so the three main focal points that stood out to me were the telephone pole, the cars stacked up on top of each other, and the building. And that's what I did. Now, it didn't come out the way that I see a lot of other people's urban sketching, <laughs> urban sketches. They didn't come out the way that I thought in my head when I very first like looked at what I was seeing and I took a picture of it. And But it came out me. It came out my thing, my style, and I realized while I was doing that, that I'd found my thing. All this time I've been searching, and it's in my journal pages, and has been in my journal pages all along. I do a hodgepodge of things. I do a hodgepodge of things. From the little books. Like, I draw things that are on washi tape. I draw things that I see from clip art, I draw things in real life, like that candle that I was given in Happy Mail. This was one of a real, really fun page, and I took it from Everyday Ephemera. This paper came from Happy Mail. This was one of my other really fun pages, and that was my day spent with my mom. I drove Mr. Rockstar's truck. I had lunch with my mom. Um, we went to the probate court, and that's kind of like what the building looked like. That was paperwork from probate, and this was my view on the way home. And I wanted to pull over and take a picture of it, but I wasn't able to. Mr. Victor and me and the I love you and what he said. I love you this much, I told him. And he said, I love you too much. <laughs> I had gotten in this place where I felt like if only I could get better at video editing. If only I could, and I have DIY lighting, and I have the microphone boom arm that I have attached the camera thing to, to better, uh, to make video filming better. I've got my DIY box that I film under for flip throughs. It should have made it longer, but anyway, it doesn't, that's not the point. The point is that there are things either DIY or that we see that we want to purchase. Sometimes I see things and I know I can't afford them, so I DIY them. I love doing that. That's creative. But when you see things and you're like, well, I can't really afford that, you save up a tiny bit of money and you get that. And then I'm thinking, well, you know, that $100 or that $200 or that whatever amount it is, I can spend it on, and let's just say, for example, on my wish list is this beautiful sunset looking vanishing point pen, fountain pen. For the price of that $200 pen, I could get all of these pens that I have, including the other Echo, which is back there on my desk, and probably something else, ink maybe. 
or I could get some more watercolors. I could get some arches paper. <laughs> I could get, I don't know, I could get an, any number of things. I could get some of those spray things, the watercolor spray things. I could get some alcohol inks. I could actually get some distress stains because I only have three and they're in these little dauber bottles and I've had them for two years. And I have brown, blue, and green. And the brown is almost finished. But when I go when I go to Michael's and I have my coupon and I'm looking at those things in the back of my head, I'm thinking, okay, distress stains and I'm pricing them. And I'm going, well, for the price of that, I could get da 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 da. So I always end up getting da 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 more better. I always end up getting the other because I could get more for my money. Because distress stains are wonderful for mixed media, but I don't do a ton of mixed media and they're, you know, I don't do a lot of mixed media. I watercolor is my jam. Adding pictures and draw, documenting my day with everyday ephemera, real life ephemera, some pages from magazines and I get advertisements in the mail from stores and from all different kinds of places from there. And I'm thinking, I was sitting at that table with my daughter thinking, I need to get back to my roots. And before that, I was thinking, it's it, the things aren't helping me feel any better. Staying so busy is not helping me feel any better. The more I get, the, the better I get at video editing, the more I realize how much I don't know and the better I really do need to get. The more I make videos, and the more I see other people boom with their videos, and then I wonder what's wrong with me. Why aren't my videos getting more views? Why isn't my channel getting more subscribers? Why am I not growing the way that I see other people growing? And I've had this conversation with quite a few other YouTubers who are in the same sort of place that I'm at. They're right around the same amount of, of subscribers and they do similar content and at the same we're sort of at the same place where do you want your channel to go do you want to be authentic to you and be real and like Cindy said I'm never going to be one of those people who has perfect videos anymore than I'm going to be one of those people who has perfect journal pages who has perfect handwriting although Cindy does have some damn near perfect hand oh my god she's got the best handwriting I love her lettering videos love her lettering videos um, I love her handwriting. And there are other people, and you can see their improvement. Boho Berry talked about her handwriting and something recently. And you see improvement, and you see, but then you think, well, maybe I'm just not good enough. Maybe uh, the reason that I don't have a whole ton of subscribers on YouTube or follow our patrons on Patreon is that I'm in this niche. And it's not like the big platform kind of niche. I don't have that assumed standard video that is out there on social media or my pictures or whatever, you know. Uh, I don't share on Instagram nearly enough. I don't share my videos on Pinterest or in other Facebook groups like when I do Hobonichi Planner videos. I don't share them in the Hobonichi Facebook groups hardly ever or, or my Traveler's Notebooks videos in the Traveler's Notebooks in the Traveler's Notebook Facebook group and I probably should. My videos would probably get a lot more views if I shared them that way. Part of the problem is is that I don't think about it. Part of the problem is is that I feel hesitant to do that because doesn't that feel a little bit narcissistic? You know, do I mean I don't know that they want me sharing my videos in that, you know, group. I don't know. I don't know. And all I know is that lately I felt like I was going down that rabbit hole. I felt like I'm not good enough because I can't afford all those fancy things. I felt like I'm not good enough because my journal pages aren't perfect, because my videos aren't perfect, because my accent isn't perfect, because I'm never going to be one of those people who have those kind of perfect videos or those perfect pictures are those perfect journal pages or the perfect planner pages or any of that and I I'm okay with that what I'm not okay with however is feeling like the things the fancy things are going to make me feel better are going to make me feel good enough 
I'm not okay with being with with feeling like Alice down that rabbit hole. I'm okay with enabling and being enabled a bit, but I'm not okay with feeling like the things are what's really important because what's really important I could actually do with a pen and a box of crayons and some paper. So December is going to be my use what you have month. December is going to be about getting back to the roots of what I love to do and what I enjoy and, and, and DIYing different things and having some fun. It's going to be about figuring out what I really do love, what I really would like to try, what I really am good at, <laughs> and re-emphasizing the fact that I am good enough. Those self-doubts, those feelings of inadequacy, we, can, we can't replace that void or our insecurities or our feelings of not being good enough with things. It won't make us feel better. It just, in the end, makes us feel a bit worse because what if you can't afford all of those things? You know, what if, what if the next best thing is something that doesn't sit with you or it, you don't really like and then you've invested all this money in it and it's not something you even like. Now some things you can resell but no amount of traveler's notebooks or Hobonichi's or watercolor palettes or watercolor brushes or fountain pens or pen cases or notebooks or sketchbooks. No amount of things is going to make my art better if I don't work at my art. No amount of things is going to make my videos better if I don't work at making my videos better. No amount of things is going to make me feel better about myself if I don't work at feeling better about myself. No amount of things or no amount of busyness is going to make me get over feeling so sad and angry and lost over losing my dad, over nearly losing my mom, over the the stress and the fear um, about Mr. Rockstar having Crohn's disease. It's, the things aren't going to fix those things. It's time to address some of the real issues for me and I thought I'd share my journey here. It's just very personal and it's going to be probably way more personal on on Patreon. The debate about functional and pretty planning is a big debate in the planner community. I struggled and I struggled because I realized that as creative as I am and as much as I love having stickers to make it easier. I enjoy drawing those little things, the little faces and the little fancy stick figures much better than I actually like putting a sticker on a page. So I'm using up some of my stickers but I'm going to get back to drawing those things. Um, December is going to be that for me. I'm going to be drawing the things. Now I'm using up some of the stickers because I've already put some of the stickers down on my pages and I have some stickers. Some of them are samplers, you know, I can't afford a subscription box of stickers and that's what made me start thinking you know I was like oh stickers oh they're so cute and they are so cute but do I really want to spend twenty to thirty dollars a month on stickers on some subscription box for stickers or, or for bits and pieces of ephemera when I can find those in all different kinds of places for free because if I wanted to get a subscription box like that, I'd have to give up my art snacks box. And I like the art snacks box way too much to give it up. I get to try new products and watch videos about people trying those same new products to figure out what they really are and how you can really use them and different things like that. I'm at this weird place where I'm at a crossroad. And the crossroad is being authentic to me and being real. And taking my channel in a direction that is true to me about being creative and all the creative things that from DIY projects to the coffee chats that talk about creativity and different issues and things that come along with living a creative life to writing to journaling and art and learning all of these things to do I want to take my channel in a direction where I see where the views really come from because 
as much as I love to bullet journal, I need more structure in my life. And I really, as far as planning goes, I don't like creating the calendars every single month. I like having the calendar already made. I love the Hobonichi. I absolutely love the Hobonichi. The only downside to the Hobonichi, if you want to journal, is that it's only one page per day. If you're planning, the only downside is you don't really have room for collections. So I still do kind of do the bullet journal as far as collections go. I'm going to be chronicling all in December how I am using what I have and going through what I have and getting some stuff organized and purged so that in January I can de-stash some stuff. And um, some of that will be donating, some of that will be selling. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I I tend to spend my money more on pens and notebooks and ink and watercolor and, and just started really investing in watercolor brushes and books. <laughs> uh, I don't do a ton of ephemera and stuff like that. Um, I don't, if I'm, I'd rather spend, if I'm going to spend, two, if I have $200 to spend, there's a part of me that would really love to to choose that sunburst, sunset, vanishing point, fountain pen. But there's this other part of me that says, you know what? For that $200, I could buy an HP sprocket. I could buy that rose-colored red Twisby fountain pen that's coming out beginning of December, which I'm going to actually beginning. It's going to be, it's my reward for winning NaNoWriMo. I didn't get the winter t-shirt and yeah, that's the only thing I'm, I'm actually buying in December and that's because it doesn't come out until December so I have no choice and I know if I don't get it in December then they may end up out of stock because they do end up out of stock. So I could get a fountain pen and some fountain pen ink and I could get the HP sprocket and I could maybe get some water, a new watercolor pad like maybe arches, a small thing of arches watercolor paper. I could get a couple of rolls of washi tape, like some shark washi tape for over the summer when shark week happens. Or I could just draw the washi tape myself like I did in my Hobonichi with the shark pens. And I could get something else that I really want, like some kind of thing for storage. Um, there's a number of things. I want a new headset and I need it to be USB with a microphone because I have a really nice headset but I can't use it because the port on my computer is still not working for you to plug it in. Um, I need a microphone for voiceovers so that it's better. You know, I could do things, spend that money on things that would improve my videos you know, are things that I really like or things that I think I really enjoy or that I need to use or I could spend my money on more expensive things and only get like the one thing, like the one fountain pen. I'm probably never going to be one of those people who spends upwards over a hundred dollars for a fountain pen. I'm just probably never going to be one of those people. Now, if I got one as a gift or something, that would be different. And as much as I love them, that's just the logical part of me, the rational part of me thinks, oh my God, do you know what all I could get with that? <laughs> so I, I, I'm, but I'm, I'm definitely at this crossroad where I'm trying to figure out where I'm headed. And I know I was headed in the wrong direction. The fancy things, the things will not make me good enough. The things will not improve my art. Only I can improve my art. The things will not improve my writing. The things will not improve how I draw. The things will not improve me, my hand, anything, um, only I can do that. What I can do, however, is go back to my roots and go back to uh, having less to choose from so that I can be more creative because I find that the more I have to choose from, the more antsy I am. It's too much. It's too much to choose from. It's too overwhelming. And I don't, I'm not as creative because I'm not thinking as much outside of the box. And I prefer to think outside of the box. I prefer to be outside of the box. I don't like being in the box. And um, so I'm just at this weird place. So like I said, December is going to be my, my use what I have, my work on me, 
and I'm good enough and show mistakes and not worry about them and I'm going to do the best job I can do with editing my videos but I'm no longer going to try to do fancy stuff <laughs> um, I'm just going to get better at the editing in general I'm going to work on sharing my videos on social media more um, I need a social media checklist I need to figure out how to share a video on Pinterest and how to share a video on Instagram um, because I don't really know and I'm going to work on yeah work on some of that work on improving me and myself and my channel and my art and my my words and my journals and all of that without worrying about the things I'm streamlining things I'm improving things I'm all different I feel a lot better about where I'm at as a person it is for me all about being creative and chronicling my journey because it is a journey all of this is a journey life is a journey and life as a creative person is is such a fun journey but we do all find ourselves sometimes getting stuck in a rut or feeling overwhelmed or feeling stressed out feeling like we're not good enough feeling any number of things and I like a lot of people um, have been guilty of chasing perfection I've been I've been guilty of feeling like I'm not good enough because of I've been guilty of chasing the rabbit down the hole like Alice by by thing you know by by with the things and it's not the things I can go to the library and get books and read them normally I do that the only books I buy now are books that are part of collections I've already started or books that I really really want and would want to keep and read again I have a lot of books and some of them I've had for a long time Stephen King is one I'll always collect I have a whole bookshelf of his some of the others I've been collecting for a long time too like Dean Koontz and stuff like that but yeah I just thought I'd um, I talk about that if I'm not I'm, I know I'm not alone but if you felt that stress the angst the the the, the pressure to um, get the fancy things to buy the things or to do the things let me know in the comments below this is a touchy subject and I'm not saying that people who have perfect videos are that people who have perfect pages are that people who buy the things or that 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 anything is that that's wrong it's not but for me I realized I was headed in a direction that I did not like because I can't fill a void in my life that is empty that is an emotional void with things I can't fill the insecurity void the self-doubt void that that space of feeling like I'm not good enough with things because that doesn't improve my my self-confidence my self-esteem that only it's like putting a band-aid on a wound you know I need to fix the problem not not just put a band-aid over it the things are just band-aids and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the things so I just want to make that clear and I'm not being judgmental I'm talking about how I felt about me I realized what I was doing and um, I want my art to be about the art, about the process, about finding different ways and different things and doing things DIY and enjoying documenting my life. And sometimes it is about like your supplies. I have some favorite supplies and a lot of them are budget supplies and then they're in the medium range. And I have a few luxury items like Daniel Smith watercolors and the Schminkas, but I don't have all the colors like I want black and white. I really need a, a, a in either an India ink white or and I need a better black. But those are on my to buy list, the, the black and the white. <laughs> the rest of them are wish list items. You know, like right now it's getting ink cartridges from my printer and getting some new photo paper. Those are priority things on my list of things to buy. Whereas buying washi tape or distress stains or what's that one thing I really want the tabs for my Hobonichi the monthly tabs I want some of those then I'm thinking spend 14 20 dollars however much those tabs are the little 
tabs, or I can make them myself, or I could just not worry about the tabs and use a little tiny bit of washi tape, which is what I've used previously. I'm thinking I could spend that $20 on something I really need. I don't know. See, I'm at that place. And now I'm just rambling, so I'm going to cut this and <laughs> be done with it. <sighs> because this is such a weird subject to talk about. I think sometimes people feel really funny about talking about things like this. Because you don't want people to misconstrue that what you're saying. I don't think there's anything wrong with buying that $200 vanishing fountain pen, vanishing point fountain pen, if you have $200 um, to spend on it without breaking the bank, without worrying about your groceries or, or anything else. But right now, I need new glasses and I need to fix my car and we need to fix Mr. Rockstar's truck and we need to fix some things in the house. So spending $200 on a fountain pen, not going to happen. However, getting an HP sprocket for Christmas and that Twisby fountain pen as a reward and as part of my Christmas could maybe happen. That fountain pen may be the only thing I get for Christmas other than what I get from my mom and stuff like that because we're, we're, we're actually concentrating on Victor and our kids and our parents for Christmas. We're not really doing very much for us at all because we don't have the money for it. So the fountain pen will be my reward slash Christmas present. And I'm okay with that. So part of using what I have in December is about using what I have. And part of it is about budget and about necessity. So yeah, if you have thought about any of this or you suffer from chasing perfection and feeling like you're not good enough, um, if you feel like Alice down the rabbit hole when it comes to some of this fancy stuff, if you have to pick and choose, what you get and you or if you feel like the perfection thing has really taken a toll on you I just I realized I was in a bad place I was I was trying to fix things or or fill things fill a void by either being too busy or by things and that doesn't cut it that doesn't work because it, it's all still in here and in here um, so I'm working on the self-esteem I'm working on working through my emotions and my grief and stuff through art, which is what I really need to do, but I'm, which is what I've been doing, but it's not the things. It's not the things. Thanks for watching, y'all. I hope you have a good one. I will talk to you again soon. Bye, y'all.